Hello, welcome to our second Facebook Live class. I'm Giuliano Hazan, and to begin with, I want to introduce my team just like before. I have my wife, Lael, our Hi. producer. She Hi. is going to be reading any questions that you might have. So any questions you have during the class, just type them into the comments section and I will answer them. And then our cameraman is our daughter, Michaela. And then supervising everything, making sure nothing goes wrong, is Gabriella. No pressure there. Okay, so today I'm gonna to make one dish. I'm going to make a uh, spaghetti alla carbonara. Uh, but actually I'm gonna make a little twist on spaghetti alla carbonara. I'm going to add some zucchini to it. Uh, you know, it's a very rich dish and I always felt that a little bit of vegetable in it uh, might be good. And so that's what I added. So to begin with, we're going to start by melting some butter and a little bit of olive oil. So if you've come to any of my classes before, uh, you may remember that I say that we usually start an Italian dish either with olive oil or with butter, depending on the flavor that we want. So uh, here I am putting both in. Now, you know, I like to say that uh, Italians always like to bend the rules a little bit. And the reason that we're using both is because the butter adds a little bit more richness, but the olive oil really gives it a nice flavor. So while the butter and the olive oil is melting, uh, we need to cut up, uh, ideally, some guanciale. So what is guanciale? Guanciale is actually cured pork chow, and it's this right here. Uh, it used to be that it was really difficult to find in the U.S. Now, you don't find it in most stores still, but uh, you know where I found this? I found this on Amazon. So if you do a search for guanciale on Amazon, it's spelled G-U-A-N-C-I-A-L-E. Uh, hopefully you'll find it. Now, until we had guanciale uh, to use, we were using pancetta instead here in the States. Pancetta is basically Italian bacon. Here it is. So it's round because it's been rolled up. So if I unravel it, here we go, like this, you see that basically it's just like bacon. But there's two big differences between pancetta and bacon. One of them is that pancetta is cured. It's uh, salt cured and air cured, uh, a little bit like prosciutto. In fact, sliced thin pancetta is delicious even on its own without cooking it. And often you'll find it on a dish of uh, appetizers uh, that you might be served at a restaurant while you wait for the rest of your meal. And the other thing uh, is that it's not smoked. Bacon usually is smoked. Uh, now you can make this with bacon too if you want. Use nice thick cut bacon and to take away some of that smoky flavor what I would recommend is that you blanch it. Just drop it in boiling water for a minute or two and that will take away the excess smoke from it. So you see we're going to use quite a bit of this because really it is kind of the main component of this dish. Uh, so um, Michaela do you think that you could uh, come here towards the skillet and that way I, they can see the pancetta going in the butter is melted and now we're going to saute the pancetta until it just browns a little bit you don't need to uh, make it crisp you know like breakfast bacon we just want to give it a little bit of a browning And while the pancetta is sauteing, and we can come back over here, Michaela, what I'm gonna do is prepare the zucchini. Uh, ideally, you want to get some, uh, some small zucchini. The smaller, the better. But the closer we get to summer, the bigger the zucchini seem to get. But that's okay, you can use those too. Uh, what you wanna do is first wash them, which I did already. And then you cut off both ends, just like this. I cut them in half first, lengthwise, and I use the tip of my knife so that I can make sure that I'm following the shape of the zucchini. And then if they're fairly small, then you can just cut them in half again, like this, lengthwise. But if they're kind of bigger, what I do is do three cuts. Well, so it's basically three wedges here. Use the tip of your knife, like this, and slide down the zucchini. 
And using the tip of the knife makes it easy to uh, follow the curve of the zucchini because sometimes they're not completely straight. And then I line them all up and I'm going to do little chunks about half an inch or so, maybe even a little bit smaller, like this. Okay, so we're sauteing here. So, carbonara. Uh, well, what is the real classic version? Uh, and how did carbonara come about? Well, there's def different stories about how carbonara came about. Uh, one story is that uh, it was American soldiers, and by the way, all the stories say that it came about after the Second World War. Uh, but there were American soldiers in Rome uh, who wanted bacon and eggs with a side of pasta. And so they went to a restaurant and they asked for that and they were brought some uh, guanciale probably uh, with some uh, fried eggs and a side of pasta. And they put it all together and they say that that is how carbonara was born. I'm not so sure about that. Another story says that there was a chef in a little town in the south of Sardinia called Carbonia. And this chef moved to Rome and opened a restaurant there. And he brought this recipe that he had started making in his town of Carbonia. So he called it spaghetti alla carbonara. Carbone in Italian actually means coal. And so the last story or origin I'm going to tell you is that it's called carbonara because uh, you use a lot of black pepper with it. And so all that uh, little black dots of pepper look a little bit like a sprinkling of coal. Okay, Michele, if you could come back to the skillet, I want to show everybody how the pancetta is browned now. Can you see that? Okay, so now I'm going to add the zucchini. Yeah, I might as well put them all in. And maybe just a little bit of salt for the zucchini. You know, you don't salt too aggressively in this dish because, of course, the pancetta is quite salty and so is the guanciale. Stir everything up. If you don't want to do it that way, it's fine. You can also stir it just like this. So, by the way, if you have just joined us, my name is Giuliano Hazan and I'm making a variation on spaghetti alla carbonara. Everything okay? Okay. So uh, the variation is with zucchini. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, just type them into the comment section and my wife Lael will read them out to me. All right, so uh, at this point, I'm going to start cooking the pasta. I have a big pot of water here. I had gotten it hot uh, ahead of time and so I'm gonna bring it back up to a boil again. Basically, the rules for cooking pasta are very simple. You want to have plenty of water, that way the pasta can move around easily and won't stick together uh, and will cook evenly. And then the second is that once it does come up to a boil, you want to salt it generously. You know, uh, when you use any ingredient, and pasta is one of them, you want to use a good quality ingredient. And if you're going to use a good pasta, you want to be able to taste it. And to taste it well, you have to add salt because otherwise you will not be able to taste it. So I have my big bowl of salt here. I usually do for a big pot of pasta two, two handfuls. Maybe the second one a little bit less because of the pancetta. And then I'm going to put in the spaghetti. Here it is. And you don't need to add any oil to the pasta water to prevent the pasta from sticking. All you need really is to have plenty of water to have it boil rapidly. So if it's not boiling rapidly right away, put the lid back on, but be careful that you need to take it off quickly. Otherwise it's going to boil over and then just stir the pasta while it's cooking. I'm going to make sure that it all the Spaghetti is bent and so it goes underneath the water. So people sometimes ask me, uh, well, should I, should I be breaking up the spaghetti when I put them in? Well, you know, my answer to that usually is that if they wanted it short, they would have made it short. There's a reason why we want the spaghetti long because we want to be able to twirl it on the fork. So I think that we have a question. Where will you post the recipe and if someone wants to 
Uh, well, this could actually also be done with peas that uh, hopefully should be coming into season pretty soon. The recipe, will, I will post, make a post on my Facebook page giving you a link to the recipe. And also, uh, if you want to watch this class again, I'm going to post it on my YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for my name, Giuliano Hazan, and uh, you'll see all the videos that I've uh, uploaded there, and this class will be part of it. Okay, so... Now, we're going to add a little bit of wine to our skillet here, where we have the zucchini and the pacetta cooking. This is a dry white wine. Now, there's no such thing as cooking wine, because any wine that you want to uh, cook with should be a wine that you would enjoy drinking some of. So this is a uh, soave. Uh, it's actually a very good producer called Piero Pan from uh, uh, east of Verona, uh, in the region of Soave. Uh, and it's a delicious wine that you would really enjoy drinking well. But any good dry white wine will be fine. I'm going to let the wine evaporate out uh, so that the alcohol goes away. You know, if you don't evaporate the alcohol, you get kind of that strong, harsh flavor. And we want to avoid that. So we also want to continue cooking the zucchini a little bit more until it's nice and tender. So while that is happening, uh, let's talk a little bit about, uh, you know, what is the authentic recipe for carbonara? I told you a little bit about the origins. Uh, so basically, carbonara in its simplest form is uh, pancetta or guanciale, uh, sautéed with a little bit of white wine sometimes, and then you mix in a bowl, which is what I'm going to do next, some eggs and cheese and parsley, and you toss the pasta in it and put in the pancetta and the, uh, uh, and the white wine. So the thing about authenticity, though, it's, it's, it's difficult to pinpoint because, you know, recipes evolve. Uh, recipes evolve as families maybe change and, and decide to do something a little bit different. So in terms of food, authenticity is not a rigid set of rules because those are going to change anything. Uh, and and uh, instead, it's, it's, it, re it lies in the authenticity of the cook who's making it. So I felt that the zucchini would go well with this, and so that's what I decided to do. Uh, one more question. John Verville wants to know how long you set the time for. Uh, Hi, John. I set the time for nine minutes, but that doesn't mean that that's what you should do <laughs> because it really all depends on the brand of pasta that you're using, the shape of pasta, and I set the timer because I don't want to get distracted and completely forget and overcook the pasta. But really, cooking pasta with a timer is not ideal. You really, until you really get to know your brand of pasta and shape, uh, you always cook by tasting. And, and then decide if it's al dente, which would be firm, but not crunchy. So in this bowl here now, I'm going to uh, put in my eggs. And I'm going to show you how I like to separate eggs. And to do that, it's important that I wash my hands well just before I do that. And I'm only going to use the yolks. So this is just a trash bowl. I'm going to open up the yolk. And I don't want to go back and forth from one half of the shell to the other because it's jagged and pointy and it can puncture the yolk. So I'm going to put my hand out with my fingers just slightly apart, pour the egg in, and let the white just slip through my hands. I always like to take the eggs out of the refrigerator ahead of time when I'm using them because uh, Pretty much anything that you make with eggs, when you use eggs that are not refrigerator cold. And also it does make this technique a lot more pleasant on your hands. So here we go, four egg yolks. Some people, actually even me sometimes, I may use two egg yolks and two whole eggs. When you use some eggs whole, uh, what you get is a little bit more richness and creaminess. Uh, but I don't really need it here because of the zucchini. I don't want to overpower the zucchini.
So now, I'm going to add two cheeses to my eggs. I have some Parmigiano Reggiano, and uh, we have a cooking school in Italy that hopefully sometime we'll be able to go back to. I certainly hope by next year, for sure. And what we do in our cooking school is during the day we take some field trips uh, and we go visit passionate food producers. And one of our field trips is to a producer of Parmigiano Reggiano. And it's really quite amazing to go see this because even though the technology has improved, it's still very much a handmade product and made very much the same way that it's been made for almost 800 years. And then I'm also going to add a little bit of pecorino, or uh, you would know it as Romano cheese. Uh, pecorino means sheep's milk cheese. Uh, now, uh, diehard Romans will say that you can only use pecorino in this, but I think the parmigiano actually gives it a little bit of mildness that is kind of nice. I also should go stir the spaghetti for a little bit so they don't get stuck together. There we go. Okay, and our zucchini is cooking nicely here. And then last thing is some, uh, some parsley. And I do want to show you how I chop my parsley. And the reason for that is that uh, when you chop parsley, it's in the fridge. Okay. <laughs> I like to chop it very, very finely, but I do need to wash it because, you know, it's kind of gritty. So first, I'll take the leaves off, put them in a bowl, and I'm going to soak them with water. And by the way, I only use the flat leaf Italian parsley. I find that it's uh, much more fragrant and has a much better flavor than the curly parsley. You know, it used to be that it was difficult to find the flat leaf, but uh, nowadays, Flat leaf parsley is almost more common than the curly parsley. You want to swish parsley around so you know you dislodge any sand from it, and then you have to dry it. Now the drying part is really the key, very, very important. I take a paper towel and I lay the parsley on the paper towel, shake off the excess water first. And if I'm doing just a little bit of parsley, I'll do it just, you know, on one half of the paper towel because then I can fold the paper towel over and pat it down nicely. And then to make sure that it's really dry, I'm going to roll up the paper towel very tightly like this, squeeze, and my pasta is almost ready. And then out it comes. and it's dry enough that I can chop it. But I need to actually finish doing this because the pasta is almost ready, fortunately. I made some parsley ahead of time. So put the parsley in, take the spoon that we've been using, and just mix up the cheese and the eggs and the parsley very, very well. Here we go. Okay, five seconds to go. Just a little toss here because it's fun. Okay, I've cooked this pasta so many times I know it's ready. I'm going to take it off, drain it, and the worst thing to do with it is to rinse it. Don't want to make the pasta cold. Uh, first of all, you don't want to eat cold pasta. Uh, you know, pasta salads are really not an Italian thing. Italians say that uh, eating cold pasta is an unnatural act. And the other reason we don't want to make it cold is that we need the heat from the pasta to partially cook the eggs. So that's what we're going to do. First, after I've drained it, I'm going to put it in the bowl with the eggs and the parsley and the cheese. And then I'm going to stir very, very vigorously with lots of steam coming out. And this way, the pasta will get coated 
with those partially cooked eggs and give it a really wonderful creamy consistency. And then we add the zucchini that is ready. Can you see that? Okay. And the pancetta. And we stir this in. So, you know, I started talking a little bit about the, the parmigiano and how important it is to use a very good product, like real parmigiano reggiano. You want to have the words on the rind. Uh, the olive oil. Always use a really good olive oil. Now, we actually import an olive oil, so if it has my name on it, uh, I can guarantee you that it will be good, but of course there are other good olive oils. What you want to look for is an extra virgin olive oil. Oopsie. You want to look for an olive oil uh, that uh, has on it uh, the words that say where the olives come from. Because if it just says produced in Italy, it doesn't necessarily mean that it was made, it, it was made with olives that came from Italy. So it should say uh, that the olives are Italian. So I have a question. Yes, Susan Berger asks to please discuss best pasta, where to order, and dry versus fresh. Would like you to repeat the question because they can't hear me. Oh, okay, yes, of course. So the question was, uh, what brand of pasta, where to get it, and dried versus not? Uh, I could almost do another whole class on, on talking about that, but the, the short answer is use a high quality pasta, meaning a pasta that is made by an artisanal producer which is unlikely to be sold in a supermarket, but you can find very good artisanal pastas in many specialty Italian stores. Uh, I'll just rattle off some uh, producers that are very good. Felicetti, Martelli, uh, Giuseppe Cocco, uh, Rustichella can be very good. All of these are excellent pastas. And dried pasta is a flour and water pasta, which is much sturdier, and that's why it's better for this kind of dish then an egg pasta. Egg pasta is very delicate and tender. That is the short answer. One more. I'm going to get some plates in the meantime. Um, Sally would like to know uh, what do you recommend with your olive oil shelf life? How long can you okay. And they want to know where we can get our olive oil. Uh, so uh, olive oil shelf life and where can you get it? So. Uh, I'm very grateful for that question because otherwise I would have forgotten to tell you where that you can go on my website julianohazan.com and you'll see uh, Giuliano's food products and if you go to that page uh, you'll see lots of different products that we bring in. The olive oil is one of them. We also have a red wine vinegar uh, that is from Valpolicella and aged in brandy oak barrels for 36 months. Very wonderful and rich. We have a rice that is a cadnaroli rice made the same way that rice was processed in 1648 with a mortar and pestle method. This is the only rice made this way that you can get uh, in the United States. And uh, by the way, we also bring our students to see how it's made. Uh, and then also we have uh, something that we don't bring in, but we make here. This is uh, uh, a tomato sauce. It's actually my mother's famous butter, onion, and tomato sauce. Uh, if you Google Marcella Hazan's tomato sauce, you will find out all about it. Uh, and uh, so what was the other question about olive oil? Shelf life. Shelf life of olive oil. Uh, olive oil doesn't really um, improve necessarily with age like wine does. Uh, it's fine for two years, perfectly fine. After two years, it, it doesn't taste bad, but it starts to lose its nutritional qualities, uh, the antioxidants and the vitamins that help you stay young. And uh, uh, on our bottles of olive oil now, we put the harvest date so that you'll know when it was harvested. Uh, not just the expiration date, because Italian laws with expiration dates are almost meaningless. Uh, so this way you'll know when it was harvested. And by the way, fresh oil, you know, just 
made is wonderful, but actually most olive oil producers prefer their oil after it has sat for a few months because the flavors really come together well. So don't be concerned about not having gotten the oil, you know, a month after it was made. Uh, a year or more even after it was made is perfectly fine. So I'm going to dish out some pasta now uh, because uh, I have a feeling that I have some hungry daughters who might want to taste. So I'll put a little bit in the plate here and we can taste. So if you want to set the camera so you don't have to fiddle with it and then you can come over and have a little bit. And this is Gabriella here and our cameraman. <laughs> Thank you, Michaela. And we can taste a little bit. Uh, so on our website, uh, you'll also find a schedule of cooking classes that we give in Sarasota. Uh, we haven't been able to give classes for quite a while, but we will be starting slowly to give some classes with all sorts of safety measures uh, in place. Uh, so you'll find a schedule for that as well. And I think I have another question. Uh, somebody got the, the sauce from uh, Cody Brothers in Sacramento, and another person wants to know when you're doing this class again, and people are thinking well, thank you for watching, and um, I will think of something else to do and do it again maybe in a couple of weeks. So, is it okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Parego. So, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, again, I'm Giuliano Hazan, and I've made a uh, spaghetti alla carbonara with zucchini and Oh, mailing lists. If you'd like to join our email list, uh, which is the best way really to find out about things like this, uh, again, just go to my website. You'll see where it says uh, join email list. Uh, click that and enter your information and you'll be on our email list. You can also email me from my website. If you have any other questions after this that come up, uh, please feel free to send me an email from my website uh, and I will get back to you. So. Thank you very much and bon appetito.